Hey everyone, welcome back again. So in, in, in our last uh, video tutorial, we have uh, seen in a very detailed uh, manner what are the managed tables and how uh, Hive manages that. So from the location perspective, what if we delete that table and whatnot, right? So on the same lines, let's now understand what exactly uh, you mean by the external table. In my last video, I have already, you know, uh, touch based a little about uh, what what exactly the difference in between the managed table and external table is. But let's try to understand it in a bit more detail. Okay. So now the main difference in these two uh, concepts, right, is about the where Hive stores the data basically. So this particular two concepts are differentiated based on this point only that how managed table stores the data like in terms of the location and when we create the external table then how the data gets stored right what is the uh, you know feature that external table gives you when uh, when it comes to the data storage part now the biggest advantage that you get uh, when you create an external table is the storage flexibility now when we when i say storage it is uh, nothing but the path at which your data is stored now for example uh, when we consider the managed table right so the location of the data storage is fixed that it will create the uh, directory under the slash user slash hive slash warehouse and then it will create the same directory as that of your table name and under that it will keep on storing the file and let's say if there is new data that gets added into the system or if you want to insert more records then you being a developer let's say or if uh, you being you know da uh, data loading uh, let's say you are loading the data then you have to make sure that you are explicitly loading that particular data by using the load command right that we have seen in our last tutorial in that particular location right so if you let's say forget that or if that if there are some mistakes that are being done then uh, you know obviously the data will not be reflected on the table right but this kind of a flexibility that you always get when you create the external table let's try to understand this in bit more detail before going to uh, how to create the external table and all i would like to show you some locations that I have already created for you right so let me show you that so I have created this test directory and it has already we have I have uh, you know copied these two files one is employee.csv and another one is employee1.csv uh, data is pretty much same so if I show you employee.csv then it is the first and second record that we have already seen and in the employee1.csv we have the record number 3 and 4 okay the fields are pretty much same now let's try to create a hive table and we will make sure while creating that particular hive table it will point to the data which is present at this location and this is not the location which is managed by hive because the location which is managed by hive is now you know it already right it is slash user slash warehouse slash hive and then name of your table but this is a different location though it is present in the hdfs but this is not the location which hive manages this is you know the location that is managed by some external entity okay so this is the location now what we want to do is we want to create a hive table but from the data perspective I wanted to make sure that it will point to this test location and whatever files are present inside the test directory I wanted to load those or I wanted to have those as a data of my hive table and this doing this particular thing is nothing but creating the external table okay so let's go ahead and create the external table so for that I go into the hive terminal and there are you know just we have to add only one keyword uh, for the uh, create table command so here is the thing so create external table 
so when we were if you remember right our last tutorial we have not used any kind of word keyword here so we were just like uh, written create table table name but here if we want to create the external table then we have to mention that explicitly to hive that i wanted to create the external table and hive understands this particular thing that whenever user says that i want to create the external table that means it is going to be the location of the data is going to be managed by some external entity or by some third entity and hive is no more responsible for the data management of this particular location so here in in case of external table what hive manages is just the metadata of a table and metadata is nothing but the one which we are currently creating okay so create external table ext underscore employee and rest of the things will be the same like our id int name string then we have age int then we have gender string typo then we have salary int and date of joining let's keep the tier column name as exactly the same let's just verify this so that we don't miss anything we have id int name then we have age int then we have gender then we have salary and date of joining right so these are the column names then our typical statement row format delimited fields terminated by comma okay and one more line that now since the location is not going to be managed by hive we as a table created creator right we it is our responsibility to tell hive that since it is a external table the location of the data is going to be the external path and we are supposed to uh, give that path by giving the location so write location and then just give that directory name that's it so whatever files that are present under the test directory it will consider as a data for this particular table and you'll see that soon so it has created the table and now if you so i'm not i'm not going to load the data now like which was the mandatory step uh, in the manage table because we have to explicitly load the data but here since the location is already pointed and it is going to be the third party the data is already here right we just have to you know create this kind of metadata and then if you just do the select star it should show us the four rows that two rows are in the employee.csv and two rows are in the employee1.csv right so it has shown us the two rows so now what is the biggest advantage right like let's say tomorrow there is a data pipeline which keeps on dumping the data into this particular hdfs location right so uh, let's let's try to demonstrate that so currently as of now under the test directory we have these two employee files and it has the two records employee.csv employee1.csv has two records and that's why select star from ext underscore employee has output it as the four records now let's say tomorrow one more couple of more record gets added into the table so let's try to create some dummy data let's say cp employee.csv into i'll create employee2.csv okay and if i just edit this employee2.csv with let's say uh file name as let's say sai and gender as female i'll just edit some salary and i'll edit the date of joining and Six. I'll say age is that. F. Let's say sixty thousand and forty. So let's say these are the two new rows. So here we don't have to really, you know, load it into the table. What we need to just do it 
is just add this employee dot to csv under the test right and just do a hadoop copy of it that's it so hadoop fs hyphen put employee two dot csv slash test right so now this slash test location has three files right employee and employee one were already there and now we recently copied the second one and now if we go to the hive and try to query select star from ext underscore employee then it should reflect the row number five and row number six as a data so if i just do select star from ext underscore employee then ideally it should show me these two rows that are getting added so so this is how uh, you know in in even the production environment uh, using external table is the most common practice uh, as as long as you know that entire life cycle of a table is going to get managed or going to get controlled by hive it is perfectly okay to create the managed table but in a real world application right where let's say you are uh, setting up a pipeline or something like that where there is some external process that process is responsible to dump the data into certain hdfs location so that hdfs location in our scenario is let's say slash test directory right so in these kinds of a case right so here the responsibility of putting the data into the location is not the hive's responsibility there is some different process there is some different data pipeline uh, you know who will process some kind of data and as a maybe end output it is going to put the output data into this particular hdfs directory and on the top of which we wanted to create a hive table just to take a look at the data right so here hive is not responsible to manage the location of the data so here what hive is managing is only the metadata about the table right and metadata is our table creation definition the create table command that we have seen right it is only the creating the metadata of a hive table on the top of this hdfs location slash test so even though if we drop this particular table ext underscore employee it is not going to delete the location because you have seen this in the manage table as soon as we dropped our manage table it has also deleted the hdfs location as well but in this particular case it is not going to happen so let's try dropping this particular table so it will say okay and if you just run select star from the name of the table it will not show you anything because the metadata of this particular table is deleted but if you just come out of this particular hive and still query your slash test directory you will see your files right so employee.csv is there employee1.csv is there employee2.csv is also there because hive is not responsible to manage or to manipulate this particular location because that was a external table so what we have done is we have just created a hive table which is kind of a metadata hive metadata which will point to this particular location to the data at this particular location right because we just wanted to simplify visualization of the data so when it comes to query language right it is you know uh, really quick if you wanted to take at uh, uh, if you want to take a look at your data if you want to do some aggregation if you want to run some some kind of aggregated function any uh, any other function that is given that is supported by your query language then it becomes little easy to take a look at the data right so that is the purpose of a external table that it just creates the metadata on the top of some external location within the hdfs and that's why we are calling it as hive external table and it is not responsible to manage any of the data underlying that particular table in the in the concept of external table hive just manages the metadata information okay
so i hope uh, you understood the concept of external table as well as uh, if you have seen my earlier tutorial about the manage table you have understood that uh, so uh, you know i hope i have simplified this particular concept for you guys if you have any questions any doubts please make sure that you put a comment and i'll i'll be able to answer uh, all your queries regarding this topic or if you have any other uh, concerns about the hype thank you thanks thank you very much guys thanks for watching this video and i'll see you in the next video thank you